Good evening. Welcome to the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Critique. I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach, and this is where we help photographers learn to master the photographic arts. Camera Artist Guild was started about three years ago with a specific desire to help photographers grow and master the art form of photography. It doesn't make a difference where you are in your photographic journey, whether you're just beginning or whether you've been at it for quite a while. All of us can learn from the process of critiquing images. A lot of times an extra set of eyes can see things that you don't see. And each time you enter into the critique process, your work improves. I have watched artists who have started out with us uh, three years ago or a couple of years ago, and I've watched them improve weekly as their work gets better as they submit themselves to critique. So I hope that you'll come and do that. Now I got to take care of a couple of other housekeeping things and share with you a couple of things that I think are important. And this is one more from Diana. I just threw this in. She put up a, uh, a video of this big steam train. I call, they call it the big boy. I love steam engines. Uh, and uh, this steam train went through her town and people turned out to take a look at it. And I really love the way you were able to uh, add additional stuff in Photoshop there to kind of highlight the feel of the engine. You can really feel it. You see the smoke bellowing from the smokestack. Uh, looks like it's going into a turn. Uh, just a lot of really cool things about the image. I like it. I like the treatment. So uh, congratulations. When I was a kid, uh, I could lay in my bed at night and I could hear the steam engines coming down the tracks. They were not too far away from where I lived. And uh, they always made me want to get busy and go somewhere. Uh, I'd love to go do a steam engine ride here one of these days. Okay, Derek Rutger. Rogers, Rutger, <laughs> where I get that from, Derek Rogers. Uh, Derek uh, owns Concrete Studios, and he's got a lot of these uh, studios, and I'm sure this is one of the rooftops with the studio. Very elegant, uh, this is all uh, available light stuff, no additional light source. Uh, got all the models to work together, nice symmetry. Uh, nice, Derek. Uh, another model with, uh, you know, a nice pose. Uh, you do see the skyline. I think you can maybe work your composition a little stronger with this one. Uh, I, I almost would really like to lower the camera angle again to get some of the city skyline up there and this bar out of the center or this wall out of the center of her torso. Uh, I think that if you went lower, uh, you would have more of the city in the background. I think it would maybe make a bit more striking pose, but again, you are an accomplished photographer and know what you're doing, so if you got what you wanted, congratulations. And then this one is outstanding. The movement, uh, the vertical leap, the timing, uh, the lighting, and all, all of it works together. Excellent, excellent work, Derek. Okay, Willie Demetrius Richardson. Uh, we've got the, the farm girl uh, shot, two of them. This one's nice, uh, kind of the older truck. Uh, and maybe just a little bit more of her face towards the camera. So, But uh, for what you were trying to do, you accomplished it. Uh, you got nice warm feelings to it. She's feeling warm and comfortable. I imagine this is a senior shoot. So, uh, well done. And now this is another one of the same one. And get her to turn her body a little bit so that you're not getting her just so broad on. A little bit of a turn would add a little bit more dimension to it. And raise your light source. Right now your light source is, is uh, your artificial light source is about level with her face and it's kind of gives split lighting if you just bring it up a little bit raise it up into about a 45 degree angle above her head it would give a much nicer light pattern on her face okay ray jackson let me grab a little coffee here i'm starting to dry out okay that's better uh nice model nice skin tones nice everything 
but you got our bullseye dead center of the page, what we used to call uh, a, uh, a um, key, key, uh, keyhole, which uh, you guys don't even know what a skeleton keyhole is anymore, but when I was a kid, there was a thing that looked like that. That was a skeleton keyhole. Um, all of this area up here, doesn't all that negative space doesn't do any good. Bring that down, crop that down. Uh, you can take that down. Let's see, let's uh, do a four by five crop, and let's just uh, bring it down. Yeah, there we go. See, I like to bring it in almost to where I got the eyes on that one third compositional line. Maybe something like that. That's a possibility, or uh, even go for a horizontal, and there you can take off a little bit of the head there. Let's go just above the collarbone, and let's bring that eye over and drop it right on the one-third line. And now, let's take a look at it, and I think that that's a much stronger image. Uh, she's a beautiful lady, yeah, well, well, everything else is there, just look at that composition and consider some possibilities on different crops. Okay, Maurice, oh, Maurice James Stewart, I'm sorry. Oh, man, Maurice, you, you killed it on this one, brother. You killed it on this one. I love this. Uh, I never would have thought about photographing a bottle from under through a glass surface. That's... Because understand that the liquor is called silver and it is clear and the glass is clear and the bottle with everything except for just the blue cap up there is clear and it's shot through clear glass. Well done. Well done. Man, <laughs> I like it. I think uh, you're just really improving so much on your product stuff. Just keep going. You're going to be forced to reckon with here in a little while. You better start putting together a really nice portfolio because I think uh, you're getting close to being ready to shop it out there and uh, start really going for some big-time ad money. Okay, uh, Lynn Green. Uh, nice image, nice colors, nice, nice uh, skin tones. The composition, uh, I struggle with the composition some, Lynn, on this. Uh, I've been a biker all my life. I started out on two wheels when I was 15 years old, and I have ridden, you know, with motorcycle clubs and ridden all of my life. So I know two wheels and the two wheel community, the motorcycle community, and no disrespect intended. But this motorcycle is just as important to this guy probably as his uh, as his lady. Uh, I know that that's probably not the politically correct thing to say, but uh, show the motorcycle. And there's no need to crop off feet and, and legs like that. Pull on back, get that full motorcycle, drop the uh, camera angle again. Bring that camera angle down this time to about waist level so that you got you can see the whole bike man i know he spent hours polishing that thing getting it ready for this shoot uh and uh then do some with him looking the way he is and then have him kick the glasses up on top of his head or something like that so that uh you can see his eyes and i mean otherwise their styling she is he is uh, it's it's a really a cool image I just think you could take it to the next level by taking into those those couple of things into consideration. And uh, Lee McDowell, again, Lee is known for his uh, photographs of women on white. I believe Lee uh, Lee was uh, the Jet Magazine photographer for years, and these are nice. What can I say? It's a nice photograph. Okay, hang on there, because I went, uh, I lost the sound, and I wanted to show you some stuff uh, about uh, the first image, and you couldn't hear what I was saying, so I'm going to go back over and go through it again, just as soon as I can pull up uh, the file for it and find it. Okay, I'm going to go, this is, uh, whoops. There's another Lee McDowell image. Let me pull this one up. 
And what I was saying on this one, on the earlier one, is I love the the uh, the symmetry, the the, sim the symmetry of the entire image. I love the symmetry. I love all the lines and patterns and shapes. Uh, the black and white uh, just pops. The only thing is I kept looking at it and kept looking at it and kept looking at it and I just, there was something that was just off and I couldn't tell what it was. So at first I thought, well, maybe it's not level. Well, the way you can check level is you go up here, you go to the pointer tool, turn that pointer tool in, go up to your guide and, uh, well, let's see, before I do that, yeah, well, okay. Pull up that guide, drop that guide down to those lines that are supposed to be horizontal and check them out. All those lines are right on it. So the lines are horizontal. Uh, so maybe it was a vertical. And I went out and I, I, I drug the, uh, the vertical lines out. And uh, I accidentally hit the wrong tool. I drug a vertical, vertical line out. Eh. Great. Come on. Treat me like that. There we go. I drug a vertical line out and I checked the vertical. See if you turn that off, you can see it. See where that vertical line is. And they were vertical. I still couldn't figure it out. So, what I did was, is I, uh, if you, in order to check uh, an image, one of the things that really works, and I'll show you why it's important, is Control J, duplicate the layer. When you're on your pointer tool and duplicate the layer, you get a bullseye dead in the center of the page. There's a little icon dead in the center of the page. That is dead center, vertical and horizontal, when you, uh, after you pop up the duplicate layer. It won't show it to you on the original layer. It'll only show it to you on the duplicate layer. Now we can drag out that horizontal, and if you drag it out, and if the Photoshop is set up the way most of it is, when you get close to it, it'll just pop right there in the, in the, uh, in the guide. And in that bullseye, there's a, a vertical and a horizontal line. Now, when I did that and looked at it, and I looked down here, I saw what the problem was, was it's not centered on the page. Here's the center, and there is where the, the camera is. It's just simple of changing camera position just slightly, just dolly left, just a little bit, move a little left, and, and it would have been there. But I understand, I've been there a thousand times, uh, it's no big deal, so let's see what we can do. We have already duplicated the layer. I'm going to bring out the crop tool. And when you bring out the crop tool, let's uh, take this up because it's a wider image. Let's go up to 5x7 on the crop tool. 5x7 on the crop tool. Now, when you switch to the crop tool, that bullseye no longer... Let me uh, get rid of the guides. That bullseye no longer is in the center of the page it is in the center of the crop. So now we can arrow key the crop over just a little bit till we get that bullseye dead in the center of the page again. Double click it to crop. Now you look at it and bam, all of a sudden it's comfortable. And uh, that is a way that you can check your centers and how you can center an image uh, using your crop tool uh, very simply. I wanted to share that little technique with you there.